Okay, so this is the first video about the uh, build event of my electric bike. Um, I guess I'll jump straight in. Uh, obviously I'm starting with the battery. Um, so I started off by building this uh, sort of uh, frame that is exactly the same dimensions as the inside of the frame bag I'm going to be using. Um, these are the cells I'm going to be using. Uh, these are the LG ones, the quite new ones. Um, they're, they're very good for electric bikes, they've got a good capacity and a good discharge. This is going to be um, a 14S 10P pack, uh, and I'll probably be using about 80% of that capacity, which gives me about a kilowatt hour to use uh, when I'm riding the bike. So what I need to do is use the hot glue. I'm going to use this frame to sort of start gluing up. Uh, I have a spot welder as well, but it's uh, one of the spot welders where you don't have like a remote line, so you have to hold the pack quite close. So I, I have to build it in. Uh, stages so I'll glue these two rows then I'll do the welding and the welding on there uh, I've made a plan on the computer first with all the cells laid out so you can really make sure that I know where the connections are going to be stops me making any expensive mistakes uh, I'll try and do little videos throughout the uh, process of building the packs see if I can help anybody else that's also trying to do the same thing I'm doing and so stay tuned for more okay so this is the design I made on the computer um, <clears throat> so what I did is I filled all the batteries in the holder that I just showed, uh, took a photograph and just made it a little bit easier. I could have just done it, you know, by sort of CAD designing it, but this way at least I could see the batteries physically. And as you can see down here at the bottom, um, I actually cut off a little bit. And as you just saw, I've got foam there now that's filling that gap because I decided when trying to work out the cell layout, it was actually a lot easier if I just... Uh, cut a few off that bottom otherwise I did all sorts of weird shaped packs so these will be positive up negative up positive up like that and it will go round like that and then that's the most positive I don't know that will be the most positive end of the pack and this will be the most negative I believe um, so yeah that's how I need to lay the cells out and that's how I need to spot weld them alright so I've glued this first set up together. I'm just getting ready to spot weld it. This is the spot welder that I have. Um, this is pure nickel strip. Uh, I can't remember the thickness and dimensions. I think it's 0.15mm thick. Um, so yeah, I'm going to start spot welding the pack together. Uh, first thing, especially with this spot welder I'd recommend, is take these uh, dials off the uh, battery charger bit. The battery charger is probably pretty useless anyway, I don't know why anybody would need to use that. Uh, it just means you can get the pack in a little bit closer, because you can see here, this is what I'm saying, you can only sort of go two or three uh, cells deep. You can bend the probes out, so towards the camera, so out that way, to get a little bit more um, reach into the pack. Uh, like I said, you can get spot welders where they have a remote line. I tried making a little uh, improvised remote line, just using the spare. Um, probe and some thick-ish copper cable but I guess it's not thick enough because the resistance is too high and you just can't get the amps through so it'll have to be this way so I'll come back once I've got a few of these done now, one more thing I forgot to mention is I have these um, I'm not really sure what to call them I guess you could call them cell protectors basically you use the outside ring here and uh, it's basically identical to the one that's inside the positive end of the cell you see the white part in there I've just put another one on top. I don't actually think this is strictly necessary because these are actually pretty well uh, protected. They actually have something identical to this in there underneath the outside shrink wrap. So I don't think it's really necessary. I'm going to use them anyway just because I have them. It's no no harm. Basically what these are for is because if you, if you know how a, one of these 18650 cells is constructed the negative is the whole outside of the body. Obviously the bottom. The whole outside of the body even right up to this edge, that's negative, and that is positive. So as you can see, I've got these two strips going across here. They're actually, if it was to wear through this outside sheath, it would be touching both posit positive and negative, it would short the cell out, and there would probably be <laughs> a nasty fire or something bad would happen. Um, so that's the idea, it just adds a little bit of thickness and protects against that, but I actually think these cells already have something identical in there, so it's probably not really necessary. But yeah, anyway, continuing. Okay, it did just occur to me that maybe I should show my sort of process as I'm going. There's a lot of glue mess everywhere, but I'll clean that up in a second. So the the bottom two 
uh, rows are finished. Those are, other than the connections that are going to go this way, all the spot welding's done, obviously all the gluing's done. So all I'm doing here with the glue gun in here like this, uh, I'm going along starting on one side to the other and then I'll glue Need something to point with really don't I? Let's see what we've got. Use this piece of wire. That's a good idea, poking a wire into a battery. So I'll glue down here with a large quantity of hot glue and then along that edge as well. Push the cell down in there like that and then put the glue gun in the end of there and fill it up until it is level so it's flush with the top. Then turn the pack over and fill these little gaps the same just so it's flush with the top and then do the spot welding. Most of the structure comes from the spot welding to be honest but um, the glue helps to keep them together as well while you're doing it so it certainly helps. The reason the batteries don't fit the, ideally the batteries should fit the wooden holder completely but I decided to shrink the pack down like I said earlier um, just to make it a little bit easier on the connections. Alright, starting to make some progress through the pack now. This t this takes a long time mm. and it's uh, not the most interesting work but uh, I'm sure the end result will be worth it. Uh, one quite important thing is to try and insulate um, as you go along because you're going to be waving around strips of nickel um, probably if you're doing this with a spot welder and you don't want to bridge across uh, two connections and short it out so I've just been using the um, electrical tape and just sort of covering it up as I go it's not the neatest solution but it works just fine it's just an extra bit of uh, safety measure to prevent me from mucking it up and shorting something out okay so a large jump forward in time and the pack is complete finally um, quite happy with how it's uh, sort of turned out so far uh, it looks all pretty neat, all the connections seem pretty good. Uh, next step is to connect up the BMS. I've got the BMS wire and the little BMS unit here that needs connecting up. Um, that's just going to help protect the pack against over discharge uh, or any of the cells getting too high. So that's the next job. Okay, so what I'm doing now is just cutting the BMS wires to length and soldering little pieces of the uh, nickel strip, just soldering those onto the end and then I can use the spot welder and then uh, spot weld that onto the pack. I can't see any point in uh, adding the soldering iron onto the pack uh, because I feel like that's the point of the spot welder, it's supposed to avoid adding heat into the cells. So by doing it this way I'm cutting all to the right length and then I'll just spot weld these little patches on. I think should probably be a good way to do it. Okay I've got all the fiddly little wires done as best as I can. Uh, I've used this caps on tape, <coughs> it's this heat resistant type tape that you see a lot of these battery builds um, just to try and organize it a little bit but it's not ideal but the whole thing's getting shrink wrapped anyway so that'll all hold it in uh, this just goes to ba battery negative the most negative point and this goes to uh, either charging or whatever it is that you're trying to power so the motor okay so the battery is now shrink wrapped I just used uh, a normal hair dryer uh, it was a little slow but it worked absolutely fine this is the shrink wrapper used, I found that on AliExpress. Um, so the little uh, XT60S, I believe they're called, connector. It's an anti-spark connector, that's what the green L indicates. Uh, that's good to use with these higher voltage packs, this is a 52 volt pack. Um, as I discovered, you can actually get quite a, quite a tingle if you touch both ends of the pack. So I'm not surprised that the, there's a spark jump when you disconnect in. Uh, the motor or chargers and things, so it's good to use that, it just prevents the um, connector from being damaged prematurely. I imagine it will need replacing eventually one day anyway, but it just stops that happening too early. Alright, so I've got the uh, charge connector uh, done. This is the cycle satiator? satiator. I don't know how to say it. Um, I've got a custom profile made on there, I'm charging to 56 volts. Um, which is about 80% capacity of the pack. Because this pack is has such an enormous capacity, that was the goal, I can undercharge it quite a bit and it should last for a very long time. I can charge it to the full uh, the capacity if I need to, if I need more range, but it's unlikely. So, happy with the charger, it seems to be working well, putting 350 watts in I think, which is actually not ideal really, I should be pushing more power in, but it's not too much of an issue. Uh, so it comes with this XLR connector, 
and then this this part here is an extra you can buy you can connect this to the computer but it means you have the Anderson connectors and then just bare wires which I've put the connector on the end so we'll let this charge up a bit or all the way and then we'll uh, see how the bike's looking then